Thank you. Thank you. Cool, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Oh wow, what a lovely house. Very cozy. Sakto lang. Dead, just kidding. My mom designed it. Pinterest, Pinterest lang. But I mean, I guess we ended up with a pretty nice home. Thank you very much. So I'm seeing a lot of bikes here. Yeah, our, uh, our family. We have a family of six and all of us love the outdoors. We like to, uh, yeah, we like to ride our bikes, but that's more my dad and my brother. And then uh, we like to climb mountains, we like to camp and, and all these different stuff. So. Oh, and what about these instruments? Who plays yeah, these? Yeah, um, my 11-year-old brother plays the drums. I play the keyboard. There's a guitar resting over there. That's my sister. And um, we all like to share this ukulele. That's very nice. So, what have you been doing lately? Lately? Uh, dami kasing, daming wedding preps, honestly. Uh, it, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but it's very busy. I'm excited for the wedding preps to be over and the wedding to just happen. But yeah. Well, you're getting married next year. Congratulations! Oh, thank you, I really By the way, it. thank you so much for saying yes to doing the saved stories with us. No, of course. Uh, let, me, let me take you to the kitchen. So, Nate, you're a vlogger. When did you decide to start vlogging? Um, are you familiar with Casey Neistat? Yes. So, he's like the king of vlogging. He kind of inspired me to get into vlogging. Nung trend pa siya. And then, uh, I used to have a Snapchat before it became like obsolete. And then, I would go to the grocery, I would make puns. So, I would get like lettuce. And be like, hey guys, let us get the groceries. <laughs> That's very funny. Thank you for laughing. I know it's not even funny. <laughs> so, what's the craziest thing you've done so far for the sake of vlogging? Oh, I know. You got a tattoo? I got a tattoo. So, I went to Guam. Uh, it, it was a trip na ako, I was alone. Um, and my parents didn't know about it. My friends didn't know about it. I chose to get a tattoo. Although it's it's a crown, uh, it reminds me of who Jesus is in my life and it reminds me of the kingdom of God. It's here and it's now and it's available for all of us. That's, that's very meaningful. Thank you. So my other question is, if you want to be a vlogger, what's like the bare minimum of the Cell phone. Oh. Cell phone by far, just like, a cell phone and a good idea and an internet connection, you're good to go. You can make an idea that might even change the world. I'm serious about that. Oh wow, I didn't know that it was that simple. There's a lot of power in media. So what's it like to be what people call now in this generation as an influencer? I guess it's a bit like like this. It's a bit like being a light in the darkness, siguro. Um, there, there is always that pressure of being cancelled. Um, like if you do something, say something that's not according to public opinion. But at the end of the day, ako, I choose to love, I choose to say what God tells me to say. That is true. That is so true. So how can one be an influencer? Uh, I think being an influencer at the end of the day is about your purpose. Eh? It's about your why. Are you creating content for yourself? Are you creating content to make an impact in another person's life. It doesn't even have to be video content, you know what I mean? You can just be talking to people and be influencing them. Whether that's one, ten, a hundred, a hundred thousand, you are an influencer. That's very inspiring and encouraging to say. So, as you said that, what is the purpose that you want to convey on your videos? Ako for me, no? I feel like I want to let people know that God has given us life abundantly and he wants us to live it to the full. Wow, that's very beautiful and really meaningful. Thanks. Welcome to my room, by the way. Wow, thank you. So, Nate, what is your saved story? So, ako, I grew up in church. Uh, I grew up Christian. In fact, I grew up a pastor's kid and that makes my story very simple and easy, right? No, not really. For me, my parents were never really a source of pressure. They were great parents, but you know, growing up, especially as a kid, I would hear from my titos and titas in church. So Nathan, are you also going to become a pastor, diba? Or yung parang Nathan, wag ka mo na girlfriend Focus ka mo na sa studies. You need to be holy. And I'm like, how does being holy and having a girlfriend like correlate? And then I distinctly remember someone telling me, Nathan, you have to be good, huh? Higher calling means higher standards. And I guess it, it makes sense, but all that did in me as a kid was put pressure on me. 
I love my church. I love the kids' church community I grew up in, the youth community I grew up in, and I get their intentions, but I couldn't help but start to feel like I had to earn the respect that people, you know, had for my dad and then also for me. Before I knew it, I was striving. I was playing the keyboard on Friday, on Saturday, and on Sunday. I was leading small groups. I was doing discipleship with people. Or else you're not a leader, huh? You know? Or, you know, I was... Oh man, the avoiding sin part. It wouldn't even be, yes, we need to hate sin, but it wouldn't be from a heart of, you know, I want to be like Jesus. It's more like, I just want to be respected. And I don't think that was the right motive. To top it off, I was an outcast in high school. Um, sure, part of it was because I was a major homeschool nerd who only knew science facts and Bible jokes. But also, you know, it hurt not having people want to talk to me, anyone approaching me, anyone wanting to, you know, wanting me on their team. You know, they would never pick me. And I would find myself eating lunch in the bathroom every day. It's a big school, so I would hope that people would think, you know, oh, where's Nate? Uh, he's probably in the other calf and he has, you know, friends there. When, you know, deep inside, I just really wanted someone to, to approach me and people to stop thinking so low of me. I was kind of on the bottom of the food chain. So I escaped to church where I felt I had a better reputation. You know, I really just wanted people to uh, respect me, to honor me. And I felt like putting up a front and performing for it would work. I really just wanted people to say, oh, you know, Nate, for everything that he's done, even if he wasn't a pastor's kid, I honor that guy. So do you know how when in a relationship, people say that girls love to feel loved? And then I read in a book that guys like to feel respected. Yeah, so I was in high school. I hid it from my parents and I hid it from, from everyone else and I got into a secret relationship. Um, and I knew it wasn't right, but I got into two more. It, it made me feel good, but at the same time, deep down, I knew that it wasn't the right thing to do, it wasn't the right source either. Long story short, I was dumb enough to have all these relationships within the same church community and I was found out and that crushed me. Crazy, I was devastated. It was actually a very hard time for me. I felt like people were, you know, who found out were jeering at me saying, oh, you know, Nathan, he thinks he can get away with it because he's a pastor's kid. And I felt like, you know, everything I worked hard for, performed for, uh, everything people appreciated me for, just completely shattered. I felt like people lost their respect for me. I felt like I lost the respect that they had for me. And then I realized, maybe I'm not the victim in this story. Maybe I'm the villain. Maybe I was an ultra mega jerk to these girls and I defrauded them, set them up for something I couldn't fulfill. And even worse, I used them as tools to fulfill something in me that, I mean, that's when I started to break down. That's when I realized I don't deserve even the respect that I wish I had. That, you know, everything I wish that I could be, I could never be. Like, even if I was a pastor's kid and everything, I still have that sinful heart. That heart that craves something that I would use whatever illicit ways possible to fulfill that hunger in me. It was a long process of prayer and apologies and discipleship. I was extremely humbled. But, you know, even before that, I found myself on my knees and in tears um, looking at what I had become. I had become the very thing that I feared. I was full of shame, you know. I was ashamed. That's the exact opposite of what I was seeking. And in the middle of my brokenness, my dad himself comes to me and he says, you know, Nate, I know there's still a process of transformation and there are things that we need to do together. But I need, to, I need you to know that I don't look at you any differently. And he told me that he has been through the same feelings. And he realized that God doesn't only forgive, but He restores. He makes you new. He uplifts you. And His grace 
is more than enough to cover all of that. And that God loves me. He doesn't love the keyboardist, discipleship, leader, higher standards me. He, he, loves, he loves me. He loves the me that messed up. He loves me. And that's what turned everything around. It's still a journey, right? I'm, I'm still making mistakes and God is still restoring me. But day by day, with the faithfulness of someone who just stays and always gives grace to the weak, despite my unfaithfulness. I mean, here's a guy who deserves the real honor. Here's a guy who, you know, no matter how much I have tried to run away, he still restores me to his flock. No matter how much, you know, I try to escape to different sources, he still fills me up. This is a God that I can honor. And sure, I am excited to one day hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. But until that day and forever, the cry of my heart is, you know, God, after everything that I've done to hurt him, after everything he's done, I honor that guy. And I'm gonna follow him for the rest of my life. I'm Nate Kunzalan, and this is my saved story. What's yours?